Teenage girl Sierra Halseth ended her father's life with the help of her devious boyfriend, Aaron Guerrero. Welcome to Killer Bites, the place to get all the info on the latest true crime cases. I'm Brandy, and let's get into the story. Daniel Halseth was a good man from Oregon, born in 1976. He grew up to become a very intelligent guy. He was a drummer with the nickname Drummer Dan, and his profession, well, he was an IT guy. He eventually moved out of Oregon and made his way down to Nevada. He settled in Las Vegas, Nevada, where he made plenty of great friends and made a good, solid career for himself to provide for his family. Daniel got married and the couple had three kids together. Over time, the marriage started to fall apart. There were rumors that Daniel's wife was having an affair, but that was never confirmed. Either way, the pair decided to split. The divorce was pretty messy. The point of contention really came from the strenuous custody battle over one of their kids, their daughter, Sierra Halseth. The custody battle began in 2020. It apparently got so ugly that the judge actually said, this entire case discourages me. It's possible that after taking evidence, I just ripped the child out of dad's home and put the child into mom's home. However, that's easier said than done. Sierra didn't want to stay with her mom. She even wrote out a list of reasons that she didn't want to stay with her mom, and her father Daniel read it in court. The judge, however, didn't respond well to this. The judge felt that Daniel was trying to put Sierra in the middle of this. No matter if the court wanted Sierra to stay with her mom, she simply wouldn't comply to those terms. Sierra would be dropped off at her mom's place and only a few hours later would turn up on her dad's doorstep. She would run away from her mom's home and go straight back to her dad. Her dad would then drive her back over to her mom's place again and sure enough, Sierra would again run back to her dad's house. Sierra and her father had an extremely close relationship. They got along really well and spent quality time together. They would hang out, go on hikes, play games. Sierra was the apple of her father's eye, and Sierra adored her father in return. Sierra was not as close with her mother, which is why she would prefer to live with her dad. Fast forward to where Sierra has a boyfriend, Aaron Guerrero. At this time, Sierra is 16 years old, while Aaron Guerrero is 18 years old. The couple was young and in love. Both of Sierra's parents were not fond of the relationship their daughter had with Guerrero. At some points of their relationship, they had forbidden Sierra to date him. But that would not keep this couple apart. Sierra and Aaron would sneak around behind her parents' back to see each other. They were very persistent. The young couple made plans for their future. They had planned to run away together and start a new life in California. Both Sierra and Aaron's families found out about the California plan and once again tried to put an end once and for all to this relationship. Sierra was told she was not allowed to see Aaron ever again. So in retaliation, Aaron ran away from his home. Since Aaron was 18 at the time, there wasn't much his family could do about it. He was old enough to make his own decisions. Now here's where things start to get interesting. Around April 9th, 2021, Sierra's grandmother was trying to reach her son, Daniel, on the phone. She had noticed some large withdrawals from his bank account and wanted to check in with him about it. She was unsuccessful with reaching him on the phone. So the grandmother decided to reach out to her granddaughter, Sierra, hoping that she could help her get in contact with Daniel. She sent Sierra a text saying, I can't get a hold of your dad, where is he? Sierra replied, his phone has been acting up, but he's okay. It should be fixed by tomorrow night, no worries. I'd like to take this time to point out that saying he's okay unprompted is definitely a red flag. The next two days, no one heard from Daniel Halseth. Still, nobody could seem to get a hold of him. His mother tried calling him, his place of work tried calling him, even his ex-wife tried calling him, and there was absolutely no answer. Sierra's grandmother tried getting in touch with Sierra again, but now she wasn't responding either. So not knowing what to do next and growing more concerned by the minute, Sierra's grandmother called the police and asked them to do a welfare check on her son. She told them that it was very unlike him to just go radio silent. So that same day, the law enforcement got involved and got in contact with Daniel Halseth's landlord. The landlord and a friend of the landlord agreed to go over to the residence and do a check on Daniel and see what's up. The landlord and friend ride over to the house and stumble upon a horrible scene. It appears that the house had been on fire. 
The fire was now mostly out, but was still smoldering in some areas of the house. In the garage of the house, they discover a badly burned body. It was so badly damaged that it was hard to tell who exactly the person was. The landlord called the police and filled them in on what he had discovered at the Halseth residence. The police arrived at the scene and were able to determine that the charred body in the garage was indeed Daniel Halseth. The police searched the rest of the house and found tons of lighter fluid and two different kinds of saws that had been used on Daniel Halseth's body. Body. It turns out that the cause of death was stabbing. Daniel had been wounded around 70 times. The saws were then used on his body pretty unsuccessfully. He was then placed in a sleeping bag and dragged down into the garage where his body was set on fire. Truly a brutal death. After the police had fully investigated and searched the entire house, they came up with the thought that the murderer must be Sierra and her boyfriend, Aaron Guerrero. The police uncovered evidence that support this theory, such as security footage of Sierra shopping at Winco and purchasing bleach. The police also uncovered security footage of Aaron Guerrero at Home Depot purchasing the saws, lighter fluid, and gloves. So all of the weapons found at the crime scene, Guerrero had purchased right before the death. On top of that, both of the purchases were made with Daniel Halseth's credit card. Daniel Halseth's car was missing from the crime scene. It was assumed that Sierra and Guerrero used it as their getaway car. When the police were eventually able to track down the vehicle, they found it in Salt Lake City, Utah. They discovered a rug in the back of the car, covered in Daniel Halseth's body fluid. But Sierra and Guerrero were not found with the car. They were still out on the run. However, footage emerged a few days later of the couple boarding a train at 5.49 a.m. in Salt Lake City, Utah. The couple supposedly hopped on and off the train multiple times, like at least 10 times. They were spotted at the front of the train. Sierra and Guerrero were smiling, laughing, and kissing at the front of this train when two police officers approached them. They seemed oblivious to the officers approaching them. The officers briefly talked with them and then put them in handcuffs. They were taken into custody and then the authorities searched their phones. And what they found there certainly sealed the deal that these two were responsible for the death of Daniel Halseth. The authorities found a video dated three days after the murder with Sierra and Guerrero talking to the camera. The video is really weird and disturbing. Here's a look at the video. I don't know what to say. <clears throat> Welcome um, back to our YouTube channel. After day murdering three. day three <laughs> after murdering somebody. Whoa! Don't put that on the camera. It was worth it. They start the video with Guerrero saying, Welcome back to our YouTube channel, three days after murdering somebody. Sierra is like, whoa, don't put that on camera. The video goes on to talk about how it was all worth it. They had had a lot of that day and payment for doing the crime. Then Guerrero slaps Sierra's face a few times and chokes her and then hugs her while making strange aggressive noises. Very weird and very disturbing. In the video, they're so nonchalant and happy with themselves, it's so hard to watch. So after that, Sierra and Guerrero were extradited to Las Vegas and the prosecutor took it to a grand jury. The grand jury indicted the both of them for nine counts each. They had committed all sorts of crimes. Murder, sure, but also conspiracy, arson, robbery, fraud, the list goes on and on. At first, the couple pled not guilty to these crimes in 2021. I'm not sure why they did that because it seems pretty obvious to me and I'm sure the police and everyone else that they are responsible for all of this, but that's what they did. They said they were not guilty. They continued to sit in jail while waiting for the trial. Then in 2022, they both changed their response and they both pled guilty to all of the charges against them. When asked whose idea it was to commit this crime, Guerrero responded by saying, well, I would say it was both of our ideas because we didn't know exactly what we were gonna do, but we knew we had to do something about it and it turned out terribly wrong. At the hearing, Sierra read a statement while addressing the judge. Sierra alleged that her father, Daniel Halseth, abused her sexually and physically and pushed her to drink alcohol. 
My biological father has traumatized me, trauma I still have to work through every day, Sierra told the judge. At the hearing, Guerrero apologized to the Halseth family for his actions. In the end, District Judge Tierra Jones sentenced Sierra and Guerrero to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 22 years. The defendants also were ordered to pay $5,000 in restitution. District Judge Jones said, this is a very, very tragic situation. I wish that there was something that I was going to say or something that I could do that would stop all the suffering that is going on. It's crazy that Sierra was so close to her father and loved her father so much before ultimately ending his life. Was it really Aaron Guerrero's presence and influence in her life that led her to committing this crime? We've all heard the saying, love makes you do crazy things, but this is a whole nother level. They didn't just end Daniel Halseth's life, they really made him suffer. It was a very violent and brutal death. I mean, cutting someone 70 times, that is some serious rage. And then attempting to dismember the body, it's just sick. What these two did was horrible, and it's a good thing that they're behind bars for life. Another crazy true crime case in the books. My condolences to the Halseth family and all those affected by this unfortunate incident. I'm Brandy, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of your favorite true crime show, Killer Bites. Stay safe out there. See you next time.